So uh, yeah, let's start with the uh, um, with the hands-on session. Um, I think it will mainly be um, uh, Jon Frederick's hands, which will be on, and um, the audience uh, will be listening. But uh, um, we will see a, a live demonstration um, on uh, how Paltec uh, can be used or is used or is on GE scanners, and. Uh, um, uh, John told me that he's fine in being interrupted. So if you have uh, questions during his presentations, just interrupt, uh, speak up, and then ask your question. And um, uh, I think that would would uh, also give this this interactive um, character um, uh, of the of the session. So uh, John, the stage is yours. Um, we are waiting for your presentation. Okay. That's great. Yeah. So please feel free to interrupt. This is I, I want as many people as possible to to feel that they are confident and able to try this out on their own. And so that's that's the goal. The goal is it's not for me to dump as much sort of information and slides on you as I can. Uh, so please feel free to interrupt. So yeah, I'm here at the our our UHP scanner. It's a 3T scanner at the University of Michigan. As you can see, it's used for Kid studies, hence the stickers. And so, what I'm going to do is uh, show you how we run uh, essentially PulseSeq uh, on on GE scanners. Um, and so, first, I need to say I have nothing to disclose. So, I will give a little bit of an introduction to to the PulseSeq philosophy and structure, although probably many of you already already know. But I, I just want to sort of set the stage so that that I can contrast that with, with the framework that we call TAPI. Uh, this basically stands for the end of pulse programming, which is a little bit ambitious, but that's, that was a working uh, name or working title that sort of got stuck. And so then I'll introduce that platform and explain the file format that, that we ended up with. And then a bit about how we can convert between the two formats. And I'll, in the, in the, um, example code that I'll show and that's available on GitHub, it'll it'll do that. So there's no need for you to sort of um, kind of write this down. You can actually go after the after this presentation, you can go and try this out yourself. And then I'll do a live demonstration of, of a sequence that will be kind of inspired by the Pulse on Siemens uh, presentation. So it's a it's a EPI sequence that uh, it's multi-shot, so it does, and it goes through through variable flip angles, and we're gonna we're gonna acquire that data, and then plot that signal as a function of um, flip angle in an ROI, and we can compare that with sort of the theoretical um, the theoretical signal. And I chose that one because it's it's kind of fun to put together, plus uh, potentially useful too. You could imagine using this for like T1 mapping, for example. So we'll create the sequence files, run run them on the on the scanner. And then display the result, and I'll conclude with um, uh, acknowledgments and some some resources resources and links, uh, including these slides. So you'll you'll have all of this information that I'm showing. Uh, it's all open open source. So a little bit of, about pulse -seek. So uh, the idea is to represent a pulse sequence as a concatenation of non-overlapping blocks. And so here in this example, you have a block. With just uh, a gradient, um, oh, the RF doesn't show up here. Sorry about that. There's an RF pulse here, and an ADC or data acquisition here uh, in the first block, and then a refocusing gradient. Um, uh, these they overlap and then read out and so forth. And in this particular example, uh, each block contains waveforms that do not need to uh, uh, end at zero, and that's kind of a relatively recent feature in in the pulse format itself that uh, Toppy at the moment does not does not support, but for the for the purposes of sort of illustration, this this is the basic idea. Uh, right, as I said, they don't have to start around at zero. Uh, so the pulse file format is is essentially a, a list of, of of blocks, and so this is executed in sequential order, and this is a human readable file format. So, for example, in block one. It says that we do not have a delay event. We do have an RF event. And so that event then is listed in the RF event section uh, where there's more information about uh, 
the shape of our pulse and the and the frequency and phase and so forth. And then uh, in yeah, so this block also has a Z gradient in this, this example. And block three then, for example, has a, an X gradient here that's in the trapezoid section. So Pulse supports both arbitrary uh, waveforms or and these trapezoid shapes. So that's kind of the, that's sort of the, the big picture overview here. And then you have these, uh, essentially these, these distinct blocks. That's the idea. So the overall framework, again, uh, as we saw earlier today, is basically to use whatever design tool that, that uh, you prefer, and there are several options uh, to generate a pulse seek file, and then we then play that out on different types of scanners. Uh, that's the that's the big picture. And so there are many options for creating these pulse seek uh, files, as, as we've seen. You can use, for example, the the MATLAB toolbox uh, in the pulse seek GitHub itself. Uh, you can use PyPulseSeq, as we've seen. Uh, GEMRIS is a simulation sequence creation framework uh, that also outputs um, PulseSeq. Gamma Star now outputs output PulseSeq. What we're doing here is is using these MATLAB toolboxes, uh, mainly uh, Toppy and also uh, PulseGeek, uh, to do the same thing basically. So that's this can be viewed as just another um, toolbox or a set of toolboxes for generating. Um, Pulse files, and the advantage of this is that once you have the topic files, you can actually already ex execute that on the GE scanner before you even convert it to a Pulse file. So that's that's kind of how these these fit together. So then, the, in the example I'll show, we'll generate an EPI sequence, and we'll generate two sets of files. One is one is a set of topic files that we um, that I'm going to scan for you, and the other is a is a dot seek file that I'm just going to plot because I don't have a Siemens scanner in front of me. But potentially that you know, or possible that that sequence file could then be scanned uh, by someone else. So that's the that's the kind of big picture. That's how these pieces fit together. Um, so uh, what is Toppy? So Toppy is, is basically uh, a framework, again, similar to PulseSeq that lets you uh, define the Pulse sequence uh, completely in, in MATLAB. Gener generate not just one file, but actually a set of files that work together. And I'll explain a bit about that. And then there's an interpreter that are, that then plays that out on, on the GE scanner. So conceptually, uh, just like PulseSeq, it, it defines, it encapsulates the sequence in, in, a, in a set of vendor independent, or in a set of independent, vendor independent files. And then uh, that's completely independent for from the specific card, hardware. And then there's an in interpreter that, that plays that out. So the way that this, this is structured, and th this structure it looks a bit messy, um, and in truth it is, um, but it does reflect sort of the uh, programming style of, of Epic on GE scanners. So it's a very convenient format for loading directly into sort of an Epic um, or a sequence written in, in Epic. So the basic idea is to uh, separate the sequence into uh, independent modules. And here, I do require at the moment that the waveform in each module start and end with zero. And then each module here contains arbitrary RF and gradient waveforms at, at full scale. And the sequence programmer explicitly creates these waveforms. And the Toppy framework doesn't, doesn't impose how you do that. You can use your favorite you know, sequence design tool. And here I'm showing a spiral in, uh, and I actually forgot how that was created, but that's not really the point. Um, uh, however, you design that RF pulse. Once you have designed the waveforms, then the top framework uh, provides some MATLAB functions for writing that to these module files or .mod file, and that's a, that's a custom format. Um, it, this is all open, by the way, of course, open source. Uh, provides a function for writing to these .mod files, and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, and then uh, each mod file is then in principle ready to be played out directly on the scanner. And then there's a, another a file ca called scanloop.txt, or you could actually call it something else, but conventionally we call it that. And that's kind of similar to uh, a sequence of pulse blocks in the sense that each, each row is represents the execution of one module. So for example, uh, in this row one, we would uh, execute module one, and it's identified uh, 
by this separate file here. So it's just a sequential list. So this would say, oh, we take the first mod file from this file, our mod. We're going to play it out with with certain uh, amplitude. And these, these are hardware units, uh, but you don't actually you don't actually write this by hand. We have a function for to help to help you write that as well. And so it contains the amplitude in this case, RF um, and theta waveforms or phase waveforms and the gradients. And then there are some G specific things like where to store the data. So, so G stores data in slice echo view kind of indices or slots and so forth. And you can set the uh, in-plane rotation, uh, RF phase, receive phase, uh, et cetera. You can add a delay at the end and set RF frequency. And I don't show it here, but in the, in the new version, we also have uh, six more or nine more columns that lets you set the three by three rotation matrix. So it's it's pretty flexible. So you can you can load in principle like one one waveform and then you can rotate and scale it however way you want. So but the main the key point is to fill these mod files with waveforms at full scale and then you scale them down as needed and set the phases needed in the in the scan loop. So that that's kind of the that that's the that's the framework and it's Again, it's designed for Epic in the sense. So it's so the Epic interpreter was, which I'll say a word about, is is actually pretty pretty minimal. It just kind of loads these in and just executes them, sets the amplitude and, and executes them. So so that's the framework. Um, so I'll go through uh, kind of an example of what the whole workflow might be. This this sequence is is a grasp sequence, is a golden angle radial sequence that I'm not actually going to show, but I think it does illustrate a few things, such as how to set the rotation and uh, kind of the general workflow and the and the tools that you need to use to to put together a toppy sequence. And then the actual example, the API sequence, I'll then you know show that code. Uh, and both both files, both the grasp example that I'm showing here and the API example are available on GitHub. so you can you can you can you know have a look at both. And so again, uh, the first step is to create the waveform shapes, and that's entirely up to you. I'm listing a couple of resources here, but it, this is really this is where your your MR physicist ideas come in, right? Um, once you've done that, you simply write each module or set of simultaneous waveforms to a mod file. So first, we would specify um, the system hardware specs. So we set the max SLU. And this can be this doesn't have to be uh, match the the peak physical slew on the on the scanner. It just has to. This can be a design consideration. Uh, same same for the max gradient. Although that's not a. There's no particular need to to limit that. Um, uh, so yeah. So you do that. Once you have that system. So this is just a MATLAB struct. Once you have that MATLAB struct, you then call this write mod function and you specify uh, a file name that in this case tip down that mod. And then you simply pass in, this is a complex RF waveform that you've designed. And then the example I provide a uh, math file called pulse.math that already has a predefined RF pulse for you um, available, and along with a Z gradient. And you also pass the system parameters because it needs that to scale the gradients and so forth and, and to do some hardware checks. And that's it. So once you do this, this module now is, is actually ready to be played out. You could write, you know, you. You could write a toppy scan with one line just saying play that and then it the the interpreter will actually do that we can we can plot it we provide this uh, function called plot mod and it's uh, i find it quite useful so it just plots the 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 waveforms and a couple other pieces of information so so this would be an example where uh, you have a z slice select right in here and the spoiler is included here in this in this module because there's no need to scale uh, each of those independently. So it plus the Z gradient that does does not have any uh, X or Y gradient. And it, here's the slew rate here. And it's good to just visually confirm that it's you know below the limit on your scanner. This is the shape of the particular RF pulse. And this example, it's a minimum phase SLR pulse. Uh, and again, uh, you can verify that the amplitude is within uh, the limits on your scanner. This is the combined slew rate. And also this is a useful function. This is from uh, from Rolf Schulte at GE, he uh, published a paper on PNS uh, prediction, and he basically gave me MATLAB code and C code that's included in the interpreter that implements that. So th this is a, a good way to look at the predicted um, PNS uh, for your particular scanner. I didn't show it here, but you can pass 
the uh, the gradient type. Uh, this function supports different gradient types. The default is um, forgot exactly what it is actually. Uh, it may it's probably the one for the GM or 750 because that's the scanner that we have. But you can see that the PNS is below the 80% uh, threshold, which is the normal mode uh, during scanning. So it's a, it's a good. You can be pretty confident that this the PNS is is acceptable for the sequence. Uh, and then you can do the same thing for the redact gradient. So here you have, let's say you have predefined a redact gradient and you, you you write that to a module file like this. Um, this actually wasn't necessary because if the GI is not, any waveform that's not uh, explicitly passed is just um, uh, created. It's, there's one created for you with all zeros, but it's essentially the same thing. And that readout.mod file looks like this. So this would be, let's say for a, this is a balanced sequence. Uh, that you could use for, let's say, uh, balanced SFP imaging, for example, or something like that. Uh, and again, uh, read out, this is, would be the Z phasic code uh, amplitude or the trapezoid that you would then scale as needed. And we can again verify that the, that the PNS is, is within, uh, within the normal mode here. So that's really, it's really just calling that right mod function to create, um, to create the modules. Uh, so once you've done that, uh, the, the, Rest of the, your job is then to put together the, the actual scan loop. And then you don't do that by hand. You would um, call this write to loop function. So here's a, let's see if I can move my zoom bar here. Um, so let's see. Yeah, so here's an example of um, code for writing a, a scan loop.txt file for this golden angle. Uh, radial sparse parallel MRI sequence. Uh, so that's described in this paper. So this basically implements, so the, the, the dot .mod files that I just showed, the RF pulse and the readout, and this code that you see here basically implements uh, that entire sequence. So you start by setting, uh, I've chosen to make it RF spoiled, so I'm initializing some phase values here. This is the golden angle increment. And this write to loop function is really, uh, it's really useful. So you you initialize it, um, and this particular example is for version three. We're now at version four, by the way, but there's a main uh, only dif difference really is that the system struct has to be passed explicitly as rather um, as opposed to as an option. So you initialize that, and then you have your, your loop however you, way you want it. So in this particular example, you, you loop through different spokes and different Z encodes. And so for, for each Z encode, we then set the amplitude, and this is scaling from minus one to plus one. So it just scales the Z gradient that's in that mod file. Uh, and then this write to loop uh, line, line here then writes one line to scan loop.txt. It says play tip down that mod with this RF phase. And that's all it does. So now you've created one, one line in, in scan loop.txt. And then the next command writes uh, the second line, which is uh, playing the readout module with a certain amplitude uh, and phase. And you tell, uh, the data uh, or the scanner where to store the data. Uh, and this is an in-plane rotation. So this is does the in-plane golden angle uh, update. Uh, and that's it. You've written two, you've written those two lines. Uh, and all you have to do then is just update the RF phase for our spoiling and then update the the golden angle uh, phase update update or use the spoke angle. Um, yeah, basically. So that's that's the inner loop in this case, and then the outer loop is just up adding the golden angle to the to the spoke uh, to the spoke angle, and then you finish it out, and that just writes like a header uh, to the file, and then, then the scan is ready. So that that is actually uh, all you have to do. Then you, that that will create a set of files that you can then scan. Oh, sorry about that. Um, so then you can do things like using a plot seek, which is a function we provide to, to display a part of the sequence. And we can see that there's an RF pulse here that I showed earlier, and then a, a one spoke, a balanced spoke readout here. Um, and then we can also preview the sequence uh, in MATLAB uh, in movie mode. And I'm not gonna show it for this sequence, but I'll show it later for the API sequence. And then we just transfer uh, the files to the scanner and then scan. So that's, basic, that's basically the workflow. Um, and so just, uh, and by the way, stop me at any time if, if I'm going too fast here. And so then uh, a word about the, 
the interpreter. So once you've created the files shown in this orange orange box, then uh, you prescribe the interpreter, and I'll show you how to do that, uh, and then scan. So th that is just uh, a normal epic code. It's a .d file. Uh, there's nothing, no special hacks or backdoors. Um, and it produces a sequence that you can simulate in W tools to see to make sure that it loads everything correctly. And um, the source code for this is available on GitHub. Uh, I'll give the link later uh, to any. You just need your Git, GitHub username. Uh, it's a private repo. Um, as long as your institution, you know, has if they have a GE resource scanner, that, that you're already good. Um, and we support at the moment uh, these software releases. Uh, we've done older ones too, but those are the sort of the ones that that are kind of in act, active use, as far as I know. Uh, there are some new additions in, in the latest version, so that it does PNS checks, uh, as I as I said, and it does SARN hardware checks. Uh, it calls some of those standard uh, Epic. Um, uh, uh, safety, safety routines. So this is just a little brief gallery of, of a few things that we've done with it. Um, you know, spiral fMRI, uh, 3D PI, which I'll show a little bit. Uh, this is measuring uh, trajectory, um, case-based trajectories um, in a phantom. This is playing out a Taylor R folds for exciting, uh, like a tailored 3D. Uh, tailored volume. So this is our pulse that's shown here. And this is another kind of a crazy readout uh, that uh, that we were able to play out because we can load essentially an array of waveform shapes into each dot mod file. So it's very, very flexible for doing a variety of things. So that, that that is just to give you a very, very brief sense of kind of what, what it can do. Uh, I'll just say actually just a little bit about how to convert between formats uh, because the the code that I provide epi.m that's in the GitHub actually has has that the the command you need for doing that. So, but briefly, uh, it's just uh, contain this uh, repository called PulseGeek, and it provides two functions: uh, seek to GE, so that converts a PulseGeek file to Toppy set of Toppy files, and GE to seek, uh, and it goes the other way. And the, the GE2Seq function is pretty pretty accurate. So the PulseSeq representation that you get from this call is, is a pretty close representation of the Toppy sequence. And that's because Toppy is basically a, a subset of PulseSeq. So Toppy does not support all the all the features. And like, like I said, um, you know, uh, uh, waveforms that do not start and end at zero, for example. Going the other way, if you have a PulseSeq file and, and converting to Toppy file, it can work, but you have to be, you have to sort of choose your blocks a little bit carefully so that it makes sense, uh, so that it sort of conforms to the, the Toppy kind of philosophy. That, that's the only little bit of a caveat there. So it's not perhaps quite as general as it could be, but this is also where it is open source and there, there are, there's definitely room for improvement here. So, if if anyone wants to sort of, you know, get their hands dirty and and uh, and help out with some of these improvements, it's it's really great. So, so basically, you know, get the toolboxes, specify the system uh, parameters, and then uh, essentially just convert it to a set of files that you can then play. That's basically that's basically it. Um, okay, so. So there are no questions before I uh, jump on the scanner. I will go right to it. So I thought it would be fun to um, show a variable flip angle multi shot 3, 3D SPGR API sequence, uh, partly because it kind of illustrates some of the some of the capabilities, but also because it could be potentially useful. You could, like I said, you use this for T1 mapping. So let's see. Uh, so I will switch over to. code here. So this code is, um, so I downloaded the, the code from, from the GitHub, GitHub repository. So if you go to the Toppy GitHub, there's an examples folder and then MRI together 2121 underscore plus G and EPI. And let's see, yeah. So this looks like this. Uh, I cheated a little bit here. I actually have a P file already just in case uh, 
yeah, plus it, it takes a while to transfer it. Uh, but apart from that, this re repository contains these files here. So epi.m is the one we'll play out first. And that creates a set of topic files and the, the corresponding uh, pulse file. And then uh, it loads RF pulse shape from this pulse.net, basically. So let's have a look at that. So it looks pretty similar to the grasp sequence that I showed you. So, but this is again, this is a complete, the complete code for generating both the set of topic files for this variable flip angle voltage IDPI and the corresponding C file. The module.txt file that it's just a list of mod, .mod files, and here I I use the script to create it. You you could easily also just create that by hand. We set the hardware system specs uh, as I've shown here. Um, and I chose the slew rate relatively low to keep the PNS low. Uh, the reader parameters are shown here. So it's going to be an eight shot um, EPI readout. Uh, it's going to be flyback. Uh, the script, this code also supports uh, non flyback. And not, not, no RAM sampling to make the reconstruction easy. Um, the slab excitation module. Here we're gonna just load a predefined shape, and we're gonna make sure that the length is a multiple of four, because top here requires that. And we, then we're gonna simply gonna write it to a mod file that has this name that we defined earlier in the script. That, that's it. Uh, I've included the code that I actually used um, to create this pulse.mat file, but that's that's not important. You, I would actually rec recommend you use uh, you know something like. Um, sigpy.rf instead of instead of this um, particular wrapper. Um, so Toppy does provide uh, this helper function make EPI for creating uh, EPI gradient shapes. Um, you don't have to use that. You can use uh, whatever you want. Uh, but this particular example does that. So uh, these are actually structs. This returns three structs that you then use to uh, to create two mod files. So one would be the, the pre-phaser gradients here. And that's because they're scaled independently of the readout. And then the other readout is um, uh, this readout.mod, which just can, contains the API echo train. But I'll, I'll show you what those look like in a minute. And then there's some a few lines of code to get the echo spacing, because we need that for the echo, echo time shift, which is a Implement minor implementation detail, but uh, you can you can have a look at the code and see how that's done. And then there's the scan loop itself. So we're going to write this scan loop.txt file. And it's essentially uh, similar to what I showed earlier. So we're going to loop over uh, several scans. So each scan is going to have a different flip angle. We defined earlier. I didn't show you with seek dot flip. I can really show you that. Um, yeah, we're going to loop over these these flip angles here. So five to 40 and steps of five. And that's the outer loop here. That's the outer loop. And then the inner loop, uh, the next loop is on the Z encoding and then uh, the EPI shots is the inner loop. So this, this basically does, um, and I, yeah, the, the details will just depend on what modules you wanna play out in what order. Um, and just like the the grasp sequence that I showed, this is this does our spoiling here at the end. Uh, when you've done with that, we also create uh, this uh, file called that I've called seek stamp.txt here. It contains some safety information that the interpreter uses, but it's not super important maybe for the purposes of this this demonstration. Um, but basically, uh, as I'll show you next, the the uh, Toppy interpreter, it, uh, the entry point for that is this toppy.entry file. And I'll show you what that looks like. And that's basically it. And then um, once you, we've just uh, archived those files into a tar file, that just makes it easier to transfer to the scanner. Then we can create the pulse file. And then that's, these are all the commands that you need to do that. So we add the uh, pulse geek and uh, uh, and pull seek Matlab tool toolboxes to the path, and then use um, and set the system uh, limits. That this is from the pull seek toolbox here, 
Pathlib toolbox. And then we pass that in to this g2seq function. Uh, we could have passed in here the name of the uh, tar file that we created, but if you pass empty, it'll just look, assume that they already exist in a local folder. So that's it. So and then we're going to plot both sequences. We're going to plot the toppy sequence, and we're also going to plot this, the, um, the pulse file. So that's what this file is doing. So I'm in that folder, I hope. I'm just going to run it. There's some warning because I, I passed uh, gradients of unequal length. So it's padding with zero. So it's just producing a warning. So, so it already wrote the toppy scan. So now it's doing the GE2Seq. So it's, it's uh, moving through the scan loop.txt and parsing the whole sequence and then building the seq file from that. And that takes, takes a little bit of time. It's doing checking the pulse seek timing and it's doing that using um, uh, a function from the pulse seek MATLAB toolbox so that passed successfully. So here we have two outputs. So the output on the left is the top E scan. So here are here's the RF pulse here. This starts with a low flip angle. So this this is the beginning of the scan. Uh, so here's our Tip down dot mod is here, and then this dephaser here is a separate module, and then there's the EPI readout, and then there's a rephasing gradient uh, which you need for steady state condition, uh, and then it then it repeats. Um, and here's the corresponding um, C file, and you can see that it generally uh, achieves the same result. So we we recognize the same shapes here, um, and it's rough, roughly the same. I don't know if it's exactly is it the same uh, point in the sequence, but you can see that the elements are there. And so this 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 seq file would then be it would then be possible to execute that directly on a on a um, Siemens scanner. And we can also um, see if I have that command. We can also um, just view the scan loop um, by using this place seq command. Hopefully that'll work. Yeah, okay. And I don't know if, I hope this, the display updates um, quickly enough. Yes. What you can see here, okay, great. Yeah, so it's basically just looping through. And you can see here the, the echo time shift that it's doing, and that's done to, to get a smooth um, phase evolution uh, in KY space uh, due to off resonance effects. So that's that's basically what, what the sequence is doing. So this, the fact that it plays out in, or that we can view it this way uh, in, in MATLAB uh, is a pretty good indication that it will, it will run on the scanner. So we're going to scan, and then I'll try to show you the oscilloscope um, as best I can, and it should basically look like this. So, Yeah, John, could you um, maybe also uh, show how large the files are which are created? Sure. So let's see. So the ones were created, it's basically everything after epi.m here. So this, these files, modules.txt and down, those are the files that, that were created by epi.m. So you can see it's, you know, kilobytes. The tar file is just, uh, you know, the adding all those other files. Uh, but you can see the mod files are typically you know, on the order of kilobytes. They can be, you know, if you can actually have an array of um, gradient shapes in each .mod file. So that could get, you know, larger. Um, we've done, yeah, it depends. There's probably some kind of memory and limitation on the scanner. We haven't quite figured out what that limit is, but you can easily, you know, load a few dozen different shapes and then you can swap them dynamically um, on, on the fly in the scanner. Um, you specify that when you create the scan loop.txt file. Yeah, so it's an order of kilobytes or maybe a few megabytes at most. Okay, great, thanks. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Hopefully you can see this. Um, and then, yeah, so what I'm going to do now. So I've already scanned uh, a localizer here. And I cheated a bit. I, I did a little test, so I, I already made sure it worked. 
but it's basically the way to prescribe um, this top interpreter is basically start you can start with anything like a, a localizer and then imaging options by the way this is all on, on the github um, you specify the you know, gradient echo sequence and you type in the name of the uh, binary executable that you can compile and it's hard coded to live in this user g research policy the name is tv4 and there are a few other uh, the parameters that you have to fill in uh, it's not not terribly important uh, but you can specify generally uh, i like to scan in axial but you don't have to um, the important thing is the cv1 value so it's we specify that as uh, i chose a, an integer that was free and that's uh, i just uh, chose it to be 30. Uh, this is a bit small i hope you can see it so we are in user g research policy and there's a file here called top b30.entry so what that this is the entry point now because cv1 equals 30 this is the entry point for the interpreter so it's going to uh, look in this folder that's listed on the first line and that's where it's going to find these these scan files so that's where the scan lies so we, we created a folder called epi let's go to that now we're in this folder and i already downloaded those files there earlier um so those those files are already, already there um and now it's that's all you need so once you transfer those files you you click save you can do download that usually takes a little bit we can do an auto pre-scan and that will take a few seconds and this reminds me one one unsolved thing here is that it does the calibration scan which we don't need and which can fail so it's a little to do item for me there um so now it's ready to scan i've i noticed when i scanned earlier that actually the receive gain is too high so i'm just going to manually change that and then we can scan and if you can hear that and i'll sh try to show you here the the oscilloscope but it's basically you know it should basically look like um like that that viewer in the uh, in in my and the scan takes about twenty seconds. And then if we look, and there's a p file that we created here. Um, and I will just. Uh, rename that and I will uh, transfer that uh, in a minute but it actually takes a, it's rather large so it takes a couple of minutes so for your benefit I've actually I just scanned one and loaded it up so if you will allow me uh, I will show you that instead you just have to take my word for it but I can do it if you like I can load the one um, so, I think we trust you, John. Okay, all right, fine. Okay, so I I already uplo uploaded this guy here, and let's see, yeah. So and then I provide the script. Turn off the the script load API, and that's done so that you can see how the data is loaded from a p file, and um, yeah, so you have a clear example of uh, how to go about this. So the first thing is um, we use this load p file function uh, to read in the data, and that just loads loads the case based data all that you acquired. Uh, there's a um, somewhat unhelpful feature is that you need to flip the the data frame <laughs> along the first dimension. So you just have to remember to do that. Um, and in this case, we when we wrote our scanloop.txt, we chose to, um, you know, put the data in and sort that in a particular order according to the. So this goes slow. According to the G's index, it goes. Um, basically, this is the FID and then coil slice view echo, and we're sort of reusing that for for our purposes because we know we're doing API multi-shot, and so we 
we have our own sort of way to interpret that. So that's what this is doing. Um, there we, we get the readout waveform because we need, we need some information from that. And then we basically sort that data into a matrix that's uh, of the shape X, Y, Z, uh, according to the matrix size, and then the number of coils and the number of scans. And the number of scans here is again, the flip angles that we loop over. And this is just, this code is just resorting that data, uh, reshaping that, that data that we acquired. And uh, the reconstruction is just a, a inverse F of T, uh, which I'm just providing a, a utility helper function for, but it's just, it's just I F of T. And then we're gonna display that and then extract one slice and display the images for all the flip angles. And then we're gonna draw an ROI and then plot that result. And we're gonna compare with this expression here, which is, which is the SPGR signal equation for given the flip angle and the T1. That's basically what that code does. <clears throat> so you should be able to, you know, run this sequence yourself once you've acquired that data. So it's, it's a good uh, kind of test. So let's do that. So the load API. So that loads the p file. Reshapes the data matrix. Okay. So here's the image. Uh, again, I chose ten slices. Uh, we see that uh, the slab uh, is just. Um, small enough to, to, to not wrap around, it looks like. So that's good. And then we can press enter to proceed. And here I'm plotting um, the image for different flip angles. So this goes five, 10, 15, and all the way to 40 down here. So it looks reasonable. And then if we proceed, we draw an ROI here. And then the script just plots that signal as a function of flip angle. And this is, the, this is not gonna match the theory exactly. So I'm guessing at the T1 of the phantom here, supposed to match gray matter at 1.5 Tesla, I believe. Uh, and also the flip angle is, you know, it's always gonna be a bit off. We're probably off by 10 or 20%. So just due to B1 in, in homogeneity. But you know, the, the signal that we acquire is, are the blue dots here. So this is the mean signal in that ROI at each the bangle that we prescribe. And then the red curve is sort of the theoretical curve. So we can see that we're, you know, we're, we're pretty close. Like the Ernst angle is supposed to be uh, roughly 13 for this, for these parameters. So, so that's, you know, it's, it's doing something. And then you could, like I said, in principle, you could, you, you could take the blue dots and do like a T1, T1 mapping uh, from that data. So potentially that's something that could be useful. Oh, let's see, I'm running short on time. Um, let's see here. So yeah, I think that will do it for the for that example. And again, I'm I'm very happy to uh, provide more details. I probably glossed over something here. Uh, so uh, just to kind of summarize summarize what what I see Toppy as being good for. Uh, it it was originally developed for rapid prototyping as a quick way to, to you know to try complex sequences. Uh, and to simplify the pulse programming language. Uh, there are really good alternatives uh, to doing this. Uh, if you're just if you're just gonna do this on GE, there's KS Foundation. And the great thing about that is it's, it's, a, it's an abstraction layer on top of Epic and it, it provides um, you know, sequences that, that look and behave like, uh, like built-in sequences. So it's a more for sort of uh, clinical uh, production type settings. And there's the MNS research pack, which is conceptually uh, similar to, to Toppy, and that can do uh, obviously uh, multi nuclear spectroscopy as well. So that's another great option that's supported by GE. Um, the, if you want to do cross vendor work, like multi set studies, I think that's where Toppy slash Pulsey can, can come in because we can, you can ensure you know, exact uh, equality of the, of the waveforms that you play out across. Uh, right now, GE and Siemens, and we hope eventually other platforms do. We have now uh, permission from from both Philips and Siemens or uh, Philips and Canon to to start pursuing this. And I hope uh, again they will re rely on uh, community effort here to to get some of this done. But I'm ex excited to 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 hopefully expand this to more vendors in the future. There are some limitations. Uh, the sequence timing right now is not is not optimal. Um, that can be improved. And another thing that was touched upon earlier, once once you've written the sequence file, 
uh, that's what you get. Like you, you load it on the scanner and you don't you can't really change anything past that. So there, so frameworks like Amistar or um, you know RT Hawk, obviously it, it does kind of try to fill that that need. So it's a, a bit of a different maybe um, uh, niche that we're trying to fill here. So finally, some acknowledgments. The topic development was mainly myself and Lisa Amos, and then a lot of support from Rob Schulte and at, at GE, and then the Pulsic team, uh, PyPulsic, like you heard about. We have some collaborations, uh, neuroimaging harmonization uh, with folks in Boston, uh, and just a shout out to the University of Michigan team that uh, we're working on various applications and that, that touch on Pulsic slash Toppy in various ways over, over the years. Uh, resources, all these slides and the code that I showed is, is all available here. And I urge you to, you know, to give it a try. If you have, if you have a G scanner, uh, you just need. I just need your GitHub username, and then you can go to this uh, URL here to get the to get the epic code and the. Um, or I'm happy to provide binaries too. And this is sort of the the main toppy site. Uh, and finally. We received funding now to uh, develop harmonized functional MRI protocols. Uh, we're excited about that. So if, if someone is interested in fMRI in particular, we'd, we'd love to hear from you. And uh, we'll be looking for uh, sort of test sites or early adopters fairly early on, maybe in a year's time or so. But you can already now actually start, start um, testing some of these things. Like we have, you know, working with the Boston group, we now have uh, MP rage sequence uh, uh, fully, fully function. That would be maybe a good starting point uh, for uh, for fMRI or neuroimaging type application, in particular if you're interested in in multi-site and cross-vendor work. Uh, okay, that's it. Great, excellent. Thank you very much for for this uh, really instructive, in-depth. Um, uh, look at uh, how Toppy and, and uh, Pulsec um, works on, on GE. Um, I think we we still do have time for, for some questions if there are. If there are no, or uh, if you are still thinking about uh, your question, maybe I can, can start. Um, so you you said Toby is uh, is good for um, for multi vendor or cross vendor uh, studies. Do you see um, this via the Pulsec um, stream, or um, or do you foresee to also um, port or bring Toby to uh, um, to other platforms uh, directly? Uh, no, I think I mean I so historically. It's, we kind of developed Toppy and Pulsic independently to sort of meet the needs uh, because we happen to be on different platforms. I mean, I, I'd like, I think Pulsic should, I hope Pulsic will sort of become the, the standard for, for open pulse sequences. And I think it's, it's the most kind of general representation. Um, I think Toppy has been useful because it's um, sort of well-suited for GE. Uh, it is, it is a, like I said, it's a subset of, of the things that can be represented uh, with Pulsic. So I, I think, I mean, there may be, it may well be that on, on some hardware platforms, uh, Philips comes to mind that it may be natural to kind of structure it um, and interpret it somewhat similar to what Top is doing. And maybe for that, there might be some possibility to kind of reuse some of the, some of the concepts maybe, but I don't, I don't, I, I think Pulsic, I, I think the field should can, you know, agree on one standard. And I think Pulsic should be the standard. Uh, it just makes everyone's lives easier. And then to the extent that there needs to be sort of hardware specific adaptations, uh, and I, you can use Toppy as kind of one example of that, then, then we, you know, then we sort of deal with that as they, as the need arises, I think. Mm. And uh, do you have plans on, uh, um, getting uh, uh, the image reconstruction directly on the scanner so that you could um, could see the images um, without um, moving the data uh, I don't have um, I don't have immediate plans we do it, it may be for specific applications I, I think that that 
we will need that. So, for example, for neuroimaging, I think it's pretty clear that to really make it uh, useful, I think we want to we want to leverage uh, like orchestra, which is GE's recon platform. And I think that's totally totally doable. Like, there's nothing. Uh, you know, we, we we produce a data file, and that can be handled in 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 the same way that you handle data files produced with other with built-in sequences or other research sequences. So, I think it'll be driven by by that by the application. For for fMRI, we may be able to achieve a lot just with offline recon. So, I have to let other people in here because I'm I realize there's a study starting at three, <laughs> but I'm I'm happy to stay for a minute. And take some questions. Yeah, are, are there some more questions, comments? So I think that there are no no more questions, comments. So actually, you you covered everything within your talk and your presentation. And uh, um, thank you again for your uh, live demo and uh, um, the uh, inspiring presentation.